It is now my profound honor to introduce to you Lindsay Isaacs. Many of you know Lindsay the same way I got to, as the wife of Tom Isaacs, who played such a key role in our community. Tom really epitomized what WPC is all about, and we were all stunned by his unexpected loss in 2017, just days before the Movement Disorders Society meeting opened in Vancouver. Tom was diagnosed with PD at age 26, and was not only a powerful spokesman for people everywhere with Parkinson's, but also a keen advocate for respectful partnership between people with Parkinson's and the professional community, and for the importance of, for people with Parkinson's to participate in clinical trials. Tom was committed to bringing all members of the PD community together to find a cure. He was also a great entertainer and had a well-developed sense of humor. He was well matched in this by Lindsay, who tried to keep him occasionally anchored to the planet. And the one silver lining to this is we know that Tom would have been very jealous for Lindsay to be invited to deliver the keynote address at WPC. <laughs> Lindsay continues to run a busy acupuncture practice in London and Hertfordshire. She remains involved with the Cure Parkinson's Trust that Tom co-founded in 2005 with Helen Matthews, who is in the audience. Lindsay has devoted much more of her life than she could ever have anticipated to the Parkinson's cause. We are honored that she has accepted our invitation to be here today. Welcome, Lindsay. little bit of Japanese. Mi nasan kon banwa. Good evening everyone. Firstly, I would like to thank the World Parkinson's Congress Committee for inviting me to speak. I was really honoured to be asked, if somewhat apprehensive, at the prospect. Many of you will know, will have heard Tom speak and sing at previous Congresses. He was the pop star of our marriage. So I will do my best at the speaking bit, but you will definitely not be hearing me sing. <laughs> when I was asked to speak, I wanted to find a haiku that would set the tone of my speech. Instead, during my research, I found this quote which rang true to me. Hope makes you forget all the difficult hours by Hondo Suichiro. As I learned more about Mr. Honda, I knew it was the ideal quote. He was described as an extraordinary man, a non-conformist, and was rather small in stature. He reminded me of someone else. Yes, Tom. Tom was an extraordinary man and a non-conformist. He used the word cure when no one else did, and he had the audacity to, co -find, to name the charity he co-founded, the Cure Parkinson's Trust. Tom was the eternal optimist. This is my fifth World Parkinson's Congress, and it is my first Congress without Tom at my side. It is tinged with sadness, and I was uncertain about accepting the invitation to speak, but I felt it was important to share a snapshot of what my life was like with Tom and Parkinson's. I met Tom at a party in London in 2001 and I was immediately enchanted by him. He was kind, funny, charming and passionate about living a full life. At this time, Parkinson's had been a part of his life for six years. We married a few years later. Well, what was it like to be Mrs. Isaacs? It was, first and foremost, great fun, if a little unpredictable. And that wasn't Parkinson's, that was just Tom. We were like any other couple. We had our ups and downs, a lot of laughter, a tiny bit of tears, mainly me, and a lot of very long walks. There was also that Tom magic. 
my surprise birthday picnics on the beach, chasing sunsets, and who else could go to Rome to give a speech and get to meet the Pope? Yeah, Tom. For over a decade, we lived a good life, but part of the package included what Tom would refer to as Mr. P. Parkinson's, as everyone here knows, is unique to the individual and is unpredictable. It eventually leads to all sorts of difficulties, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Tom and I used hope, humor, and optimism to cope with those difficult hours. As Tom's Parkinson's progressed, life got harder for everyone involved. Tom, being Tom, continued to work tirelessly with the Cure Parkinson's Trust, helping to find a cure. His incredible passion, optimism, and humor helped him to cope. However, for me, hope, humor, and optimism were no longer enough. I became irritable and anxious about everything. I felt like a complete failure. I was his wife. I had been a trained nurse, and I am an acupuncturist. I believed I should have been able to cope with whatever our life threw at us. It was at this point I picked up a book a friend had given me. As I read the chapter on burnout, I had a complete light bulb moment. I was approaching burnout. Much more importantly, while reading this book, I realized that it was okay to get help. That others had felt this way before me. I was not going mad, that I was not a failure. Here is one quote that helped me realize there was another way to cope. Don't be such a good carer. Try being a bit more of a selfish pig. And so I did. And so Tom and I agreed that the time had come to get some help. Luckily, we found the right person. She wasn't a trained carer. She was Tom's massage therapist. Yes, I did raise an eyebrow or two. However, she turned out to be the perfect person to share the load, which in turn helped restore the equilibrium and the fun to our relationship. Excuse me. It's quite scary up here. <laughs> I will be honest with you, this was an incredibly difficult step for us to take, to admit the progression of Tom's Parkinson's was affecting our relationship. There may come a time when, like me, you are hit by your own personal tsunami and feel completely adrift. This is when I hope that what I have shared with you today is useful, that you won't be afraid to ask for help. While you're at the Congress, I encourage you all to visit the Wellness Way, where you will find a fantastic selection of activities, workshops, and treatments taking place. Tom and I had come together again as a strong couple. We had got our mojo back. Then, sadly, a year later, Tom suddenly died. Now, two years on from Tom's death, I am starting to move forward, taking with me all that we shared. And one of the things that we shared was a World Parkinson's Congress. Tom absolutely loved being part of this Congress, and I know you all loved him. He played a leading role in shaping it into what it is today. And even when his Parkinson's was at its worst, a part, being a part of this amazing gathering boosted his mind, body, and soul. This Congress is such an important event for the entire Parkinson's community. It is one of the few places where the scientific world and people with Parkinson's and their families can meet and share their knowledge. I have been privileged to attend all of the Congresses to date. At the first one in 2006, 
Tom was one of just a handful of people with Parkinson's who spoke. It is brilliant to see how much this Congress has evolved. Now there are countless people with Parkinson's and their families thoroughly involved. We are running workshops, giving plenary lectures, on com committees, helping out as ambassadors, and speaking publicly about what it is like to live with Parkinson's. For me, this is what the World Parkinson's Congress is all about. The gathering together of the scientific community and people with Parkinson's and their families, joining forces to help everyone involved live a full life and hopefully one day find a cure. Arigato goizamas. Thank you. And I wish you all a wonderful and inspiring Congress. Thank you.